Brain Injury Association of Florida is pleased to provide perspectives on brain injury for the caregiver, a series of short informational videos to help caregivers learn more about traumatic brain injury, understand their loved one, and manage life after TBI. look at the changes that happen in your brain. This is your brain looking down from the top. I've just chopped off my head right here. And, okay, chop mine off like that and then look down from the top and you are going to be able to see. This is the front. That's where my eyeballs go. My frontal lobe set right in there. And you can imagine, now you're looking at your brain and look at how difficult that is inside. When you put your temporal lobes right in here. You got those nice little pockets. These are not smooth pockets. It's rough, craggly, like the surface of the moon. Think real sharp rocks. So now when your brain is bouncing back and forth inside there, it's going to tear the bottoms of your temporal lobes. As the bottom hits there on this rough surface and these ridges, it's going to tear up your temporal lobes. And then they're going to smash into the front of the pocket and you're going to get by temporal contusions, bruises to the front of those, and of course, the bifrontal contusions as well. So bifrontal, bitemporal contusions are going to occur from acceleration, deceleration injuries, and um, we'll talk about some of the problems that you have with temporal lobes. Of course, the first one is memory. It's the ability to store new information. And if you're going to have to remember things, we remember things for a variety of reasons. But it's the remembering new information. Uh, it looks like everybody in this room is old enough to remember tape recorders, so I'll use that as an example. I don't want to explain the technology of Blu-ray or DVD. You probably don't want to hear that. Okay, tape recorders. Remember? Okay, they have a, a recording head. The tape moves past the recording head. It records information and goes on to the other side of the reel. Pretty simple want it to play back, it goes past the playback head, and the playback head then plays back whatever is there. I smash the tape recorder with a hammer. I smash the recording head, but the playback head is still okay. Now, what's on that tape, I can still play back. So there's no problem playing back recorded information that's already on the tape, but the ability to record new information now may be very, very sketchy and scratchy and not very good. That's what happens after a head injury. The ability to record new information becomes damaged. The ability to play back information is generally pretty much intact. So people can remember their past history, but they can't remember the current stuff and learning new stuff and writing it down is very hard to do because you're, um, trying to record new information and it's not sticking. Those of you who can't find your car keys when you get out of here, I just want you to remember uh, that <laughs> there's, it's going to get worse as we get older. <laughs> but not being able to remember is a very frustrating feeling. And it leads you to anger. It gets people to quit. It gets people to be terrible. These, are all, these emotions are all tied together. In fact, they're all tied up in your temporal lobes. Your temporal lobe helps express our emotions. And so, whether they're anger or tears or whatever. You ever watch somebody who now is very, very emotional after a brain injury? And they're sitting there watching a movie and they're crying over everything? The reason people cry more easily is because normally your frontal lobes are now trying to shut that down and keep that under control. They're not working. Your temporal lobes are excited, and they're more excited than they used to be because they've got scar tissue from being scraped against the bottom of your skull. So now they're more excited and more emotional than they were, and there's less control from your frontal lobes to be able to shut that down. So you're going to cry at the drop of a hat. It's going to happen. The person with a brain injury has to work harder and harder to try to suppress that and to gear up for it so that it doesn't happen. 
can't remember the accident, again, it's the issue of the recording. What happens is after you're heading for the tree, your brain has to take a few seconds to consolidate the information so that it can, that it can begin to remember it. Your brain is basically like an electrical chemical circuit. Think of the electrical part sending the signal, boom, got the memory, I'm heading down the road, and I hit the tree. But it won't stick there in that electrical circuit unless it made a change in the cells. And to make a change in the cells, it has to change the proteins in the cells. It has to go through and make that circuit over and over and over again for at least a couple of minutes before it's going to get any stability and make a change to the cell itself. If now you hit the tree, your brain is flying all back and forth, that little electrical signal is disrupted, and it's not going to get recorded. Okay? It's not going to get there. So it's not going to get there. You go, oh my gosh, if she ever remembers what happened and blah, blah, blah. No, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Play them back. Okay, why remember some things? We have limbic memory. And, you know... I know you think that's kind of weird. I'm talking about stuff that you don't know anything about. Limbic memory. You, underneath the cortex here, you have another subsystem of brain function. And that system allows you to remember emotions. And emotions, if I say something really loud, I just got your attention. If I say something really loud, I've just made an impact. And you go, that guy's nuts. He just screamed out in the middle of the, the, the talk. And it has an impact. It makes it easier for you to remember that the guy was saying something. You won't remember what the heck he said, but, you know, <laughs> and not in that instance. But you can remember things that are more emotional. We have several systems. Your cortex, that's the outer parts of the brain with all the squiggles on top, remembers facts. It remembers time, place, person, the name of the person that you saw. But other things are also being stored. How many of you remember what your life was like when you were three? Didn't happen. Not much going on there. I might remember one or two little things, and chances are we remember it from a photograph that we've since put the story together or somebody told us, and we've rewritten it because chances are those brain cells are pretty much dead. And, you know, they've been written over so many times, like a piece of paper that you keep writing on and writing on, being able to remember those old things is very hard to do. But we had stored beneath it some emotional memory. And that emotional memory may be of smells. It may be of uh, sounds. It may be of other things. And those feelings are still there. So, for example, someone is a caregiver, and you find some caregiver can do anything with this agitated, upset person with a brain injury, and another caregiver just doesn't get along. One person gives off very good, kind-hearted, I'm your best friend when you're drunk kind of feelings, and the other one is the reprimand, disciplinarian, blah, blah, blah. Which one do you think you would like better? And it's because even if I don't remember, I can tell you, I've had many, many patients who say, I can't, re I, I, I'd say, have we met before? No, no. Oh, hi, I'm Dr. McCullough. Nice to meet you. Boy, it's a beautiful day outside. You know, I see people over there on the, uh, walking outside, and here it is. It's a rainy day, and they aren't uh, even faced by it. It's a, by the way, did I introduce myself to you? Oh, no. Oh, hi, I'm Dr. McCullough. Nice to meet you. You know, I was trying to find a place to park out here. I wasn't sure whether I should park on the right or the left, and, you know, I ended up having to park all the way down there. Wouldn't you know, when I got back up to the building, there was a parking space right there in front. I don't know why I didn't see it in the first place. Did I introduce myself to you? No. Oh, okay, hi. Um, I could do that 50 times in 50 minutes, and they would not remember me. I could come in there three weeks later. They still can't remember me, swear they've never seen me before. And I'd say, have we met before? No, nope, but I know you're a nice guy. And you go, how do they know I'm a nice guy if they can't remember that they ever saw me? And it's because that emotional memory that's seated down below the cortex that did not get smashed is still intact. It's our back for emotions. And we remember the emotional tone of relationships 
in a different part of our brain, and they'll remember whether you're a good one or a bad one, um, and those emotional systems are still intact. To learn more about psychosocial issues for the whole family by Dr. James McCullough, go to www.byyourside.org and search caregiver. To learn more about this particular topic, call the Traumatic Brain Injury Resource and Support Center helpline at 800-992-3442.